A large part of your story was going through hardship. Talk about that. All you're always referencing that that was the best experience that happened to your life. How come? How come you embraced that hardship as one of the biggest experiences of your life? Because before I understood it was the best uh, thing that could happen to me, I didn't have faith. See, I, I lived trying to go get things I already had because I had no faith. I was trying to get wealthy, get healthy, get worthy, get happy when I already was. Mm -hmm. And without the hardship, and the analogy that I give is my mom's to me a saint. Second grade teacher, raised six kids on her own, sure. packed my dinner in a paper bag so she could go fill up humbly turnstiles at convenience stores with greeting cards just so we could eat, empowered all six of her children to be passionate, purposeful, and profitable. Uh, she believed the fetus wasn't fully developed until after graduate school. All my siblings went to the Ivy Leagues, graduated summa cum laude, wow. extraordinary scholars, Harvard, wow. Penn, and Columbia. Wow. And I grew up happy with nothing. Okay. Um, but the faith in my life was that I had to go get everything. And, and that validated you. It did. And I remember when I was three, I reached out to touch a hot stove. Uh -oh. And my mom, who my wife will tell you, David's problem is his mom never hit him. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> right? He never got beat. <laughs> exactly. Because I had no dad, right? <laughs> so I reach out to t touch a hot stove, and my mom slaps the back of my hand and screams, no. Well, I'd never been hit by my mom. You remember that at three Oh, because she had never even yelled at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was terrified, and I just started to cry. I'm like, what did I do? Why are you punishing me? And she yeah. just grabbed me and hugged me and said, I I'm not punishing you, I'm protecting you. I'm promoting you. And later on in life, I started to realize when I didn't get the job, I didn't get the deal, I didn't get into Stanford, I didn't get what I wanted in life, the girl left me, cheated on me, whatever happened, the pain, the heartaches that you talk about, the mm -hmm. suffering, when I lost everything, yeah. over $100 million, I then realized that there is something bigger than me, an omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing source. Unlike my mom, my mom's ignorant and humble. Yeah. But this is an omniscient. They know everything. Yeah. So when I don't get the job, when I have failures, setbacks, and mistakes in my life, all of a sudden it clicked in my head. This source loves me more than my mom loves me. I must be protected and promoted <laughs> as if I'm touching a hot stove. And that nuance, that paradigm shift made me realize I am happy. I mm -hmm. am healthy, I am wealthy, I'm worthy. What am I doing to interfere with it? Because just as if I would ask my mom for something and it was gonna be good for me, something better for me, a better place, a better situation, she'd put me in there immediately. So will this source. Mm -hmm. And so faith is the only reason that I believe failures, setbacks, mistakes are propelling us, promoting us and protecting us. And as long as we learn the lesson, we'll get there a lot faster. Two things stick out to me. Number one, you when you went to your mother and she's like, what do you need, honey? Do you need money? It changed my life. She, you need money. Listen, her son was $100 million. Your you, mother's you asking realize you. I lost her house too. So not right. only did I have to go tell her I lost everything, but I forgot to take the house out of my name. And the only reason I wanted to be rich when I was young was to buy her that house and a car. Wow. wow. And she just didn't care. She was like, I thought, I said, did you hear me? I literally <laughs> said to her, did you hear what I said? She goes, yeah. I heard you. I get choked up. Huh. Are you okay? Yeah. Do you need any money? Huh. And it got something clicked in my head that this is unconditional love. It's different than trading a credit, quid pro quo, a scarce world of zero sum game. My mom would always say, don't play the zero sum game. I said, what do you mean? She said, there, there's enough of everything for everyone. What do you want? You live in a world of more than enough. Trust me. And I learned to trust her. If her mother to say that after the father of her children left for her to still be able to say that what amazing character uh your mom would show through the second one that that sticks out to me in this process is, is your wife yeah because she could have peace out dude i'm out of here you know so i see a lot and i'm sure you've seen this too as well in your career in my career in 23 years now as an entrepreneur i've seen a lot of guys build 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 but they marry the wrong woman they marry the wrong husband and poof it goes away how important is it to make sure you're picking the right spouse for your life and as well your business, your finances? Well, my grandfather gave me probably the best piece of advice uh, that uh, talks about this. My grandfather always told me, all you need is three things in life. So what is that, Gramps? He said, number one, you need to find one intimate partner, 
one person that's the liaison between you, your family, and your children. One person. You will spend a third of your life with your family, and if you don't pick the right person, you won't be happy. Huh. Second thing, you need to find one thing, an activity that you get paid for that you love. One. One thing that you love, an activity that you get paid for that you love, you will spend a third of your life in activity you get paid for. Mm -hmm. And if you love it, you'll be happy for that third. And then finally, in his Russian accent, because he came over in 1913, he said, and you need to buy the best bed you can afford. <laughs> and he said, you will spend a third of your life sleeping. A third of your life, 26 years of your life, minimum will be spent sleeping <laughs> and he's Russian he said stooping you can go look that up <laughs> procreate uh, so he said buy the best bed you can find if you're happy sleeping and stooping yeah. your life will be complete so uh, for me it's one third of the most important thing is to find the right person that's aligned with your values yeah. that is four things grateful to be married to yeah. you so they're willing to find the light, the love, and the lessons in you. Yeah. Two, forgiving, mm -hmm. which my wife was. Also, they need to be accountable, yeah. right? And then they need to be inspired by you and through you. If you live with someone that's grateful, forgiving, accountable, and inspired, yeah. your life will be amazing, but your wife or husband will be amazing, but more importantly, that relationship, like the one that I have, it's the, my wife will be here today, it's the greatest thing, I, the best decision of my life. How, how long did it take you to really find out what you love to do and get paid for it to do? Because, you know, yeah. be, you're a lawyer. Yeah. You're thinking about doing legal research. <laughs> I'm all over the place. You're still wondering if this is going to make me happy. I will tell you, my mom, although she had that philosophy that the fetus wasn't fully developed after graduate school, and she, I want to be a professional football player, and she would say, that's fine, just after you're a doctor or a lawyer, when you finish med school or law school, you can be a professional football player, <laughs> right? This is the way she thought. But what she did teach me and encourage me to do is to enjoy the consistent every day. And I think Ooh. that's my superpower. Ooh. Very few people on earth, okay. and I say this humbly, are as consistent as me. And I think you see that in my social media. Yeah. Very few right. people every single day are there of service or value. See, there's those components of being consistent of one, providing value. If you're consistent in providing value, you'll provide more value. If you're consistent in providing value, you'll start to provide value well. And if you consistently provide more value well, you'll provide more value well to more people. And see the law of potential is consistency. Yeah. But the law of profit is serving it well to as many people. So the best artists, athletes, musicians, business people are serving well, but serving many. Your superpower is consistency. consistency. What are your no matter what's then every day? Non-negotiables, there's three. Okay. One, my health. Most important. If you're not healthy, if you're healthy, you get as many wishes as you want. I believe wishes are the greatest asset that we have, that people don't ask. Remember what I believe in. I have faith that there's a, something bigger than me, an omniscient, all-powerful with everything, more than enough. Yep. So you have to be able to wish or ask. When you're healthy, many wishes as you want. If you're unhealthy, ask Steve Jobs this. Mm. You only have one wish. So health to me, a minimum of, I put time to my non-negotiables every day. Okay. So a minimum, minimum of one hour a day on my health. Two. Family, non-negotiable. Minimum 30 minutes with my wife, 30 minutes with my 11-year-old son. A minimum, I'm going to repeat minimum because people give me crap about this, two minutes a day with my three daughters, <laughs> 22, 20, and 18. If anyone has 22, 20, and 18-year-old daughters, you know you're blessed just to get two minutes. You can ask for five. You're lucky you get a text message. Thank you. <laughs> but two minutes a day is worth more than two on a Saturday, two hours on a Saturday, but I'm consistent with it every single day. I'm telling my kids, and then here's the best piece of advice of this interview, changed yeah. my life. You know I'm close to my mom. You've seen all the stories. Well, my mom is your typical Jewish mom, right? Her black belt. David. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Her, like literally, I always said she's a third degree black belt. People are like, what? I'm like, yeah, and Jewish guilt, and it hurts. Uh, but I call my mom every day, a minimum of one minute, minimum again, 
to tell her four things. And if you do this with your parents, if you have any, like most people, difficult relationship because of the expectations and the baggage that has occurred with your own parents, even though you love them, they'll make you drive an hour down to San Diego to fix a screen door, even though you can pay someone to go fix it. And you're wondering why? I'll tell you, because you're not calling your mom or dad every day and telling them these four things. One, tell your parents that you're healthy. That's what they're most concerned about. Tell them no matter how old you are, that you're happy because that's what they want for you. Tell them that you love them to remind them, recollect them and remember where and what you come from and through. Yeah. And then finally, tell them you appreciate them, that they add value to your life. If you tell your parents every day that you're ha healthy, happy, love and appreciate them, it'll clear all the interference between you and the most relative relationship in your life. The one that causes the most pain, interference, still setbacks, mistakes and failures in our lives are determined by that relationship and you can heal it by simply spending a minimum of one minute a day. Non-negotiable health, non-negotiable family, then finally, non-negotiable time. I, I, I call it non-negotiable time, meaning activity I get paid for, activity I don't get paid for. I am a student of my calendar. I study with productivity, accessibility, and gratitude, what I have planned, what I don't have planned in my sleep. I'm efficient, effective, and statistically successful with the man-made construct of time. I know there's 1,440 minutes a day, 24 hours a day that is gifted for me, so I have daily practices to utilize my time in the most efficient, effective, and statistically successful way to provide value, to be productive, to be accessible to as many people as I can, mm -hmm. to receive, Remember, there's no gift ever given without a receiver. Wow. See, people don't understand giving and receiving are one, and most people have a problem receiving. When you breathe, the plants are receiving. Sure. And then they breathe out, and, and you're receiving. receiving. There's no gift given that isn't received, so you need to be equally as good at receiving as you are at giving. Remember that, very important. So I study that accessibility and then finally gratitude, the only common denominator of happiness. Only, no matter how sick you are or well, no matter how rich you are or poor, no matter how tall you are or short, if we're gracious, we have the common denominator of happiness. And so I teach people not only to find the light, the love and the lessons, but in the context of time. What do I mean? 80% of people's time is spent on things that bleed you. They're not cognizant of it, but 80% of your time, man-made constructive, 24 hours a day, 14 hour, 1440 minutes a day, is spent 80% of it on things that bleed you. People that bleed you, jobs that bleed Instead, if you can use this gratitude, I'm gonna find the light, the love, and the lessons in you, but I'm also gonna determine, is it worth my time? Oh, wow. So if I find a closed mind, I run away. It ain't worth yeah. my time. Yeah. If I have a relationship that's bleeding me, I'm gonna let it fall away or even fire it in my life. Yep. If I have an opportunity and activity that's bleeding me, I'm not going to do it. Yep. I'm going to choose and prioritize by what feeds me. I'm going to shift the paradigm and spend at least 80% of my time on things that feed me and feed it and get exponential results, aggregate effect and compound interest in my life <laughs> with good habits that have great mindset, heart set and hand set that make me happy and allow me to make other people happy, which is my main mission in life. Boom. Boom. <laughs>